Hello, I'm Nelson Davis, your co-host for Making It TV Presents, and I'm an advocate for small business in America. And I'm Lynette Romero, a television reporter in Los Angeles and a big fan of entrepreneurs everywhere. Well, the sense of having a supportive community around us is desirable for everyone and is critically important for the development and health of small businesses. And when I say community, nonprofit service organizations are a valuable part of that mix. On this episode of Making It TV Presents, you'll see how one of the country's best-known corporate citizens, American Honda, builds partnerships with growing businesses and grassroots organizations. We're going to visit North Hollywood, California, where you'll meet Dana Haley, who has not just one, but two thriving businesses. And then we head to South Los Angeles to see how Honda works with the Challengers Boys and Girls Club to help build a stronger community. Well, Dana Haley arrived in Los Angeles in 1999 wanting to be a writer. And surprise, that's exactly what she became. But the City of Angels has a way of bringing latent entrepreneurial ambitions to the surface. And Dana was soon exploring business possibilities. It was the gift business that won her full attention. Dana's boss, radio and TV host Steve Harvey, helped her and two other employees in a gift basket venture by offering to match their seed money. In a short time, they sold enough baskets to earn a $15,000 profit. For Dana, that simply fanned the flames of her desire to have her very own business. In the daytime, she worked for others. And by night, she worked on her dream, already having learned that making customers happy was the key idea. Well, customer service is why I got in this business. I have a great love of people. It's a very genuine love of people, and I want them to be happy. Um, I believe that it starts at home. I love my team and I want them to be happy. I create an environment where they can come every day and I think that shines outward and it extends into, into our client base and I think that is the key. Dana Haley has definitely created a formula for success. She's developed not just one but two blossoming businesses. Gift Cetera sells high-end gifts and Cetera Marketing focuses on promotional items for corporate clients. Dana was working a full-time job as a writer for Disney when she began laying the groundwork to start her business. It was rough. <laughs> when I first started, it was very rough because with a, as, as a being a writer, you have very, very long hours. It's grueling. You're, that's your life. So to want to do something different and to come home and, and to be faced with that, I would roll off the couch um, after three hours sleep and go to work and then come home at 10 o'clock and start the process for building the business over again. Her perseverance paid off. Dana wrote a business plan that was a roadmap for the direction she wanted to pursue and worked with a designer to develop a new website. The challenges in an online gift company were plenty. Um, I can't list them all, there's so many, but they have a saying, if you build it they will come and they won't. Unless you understand marketing, online marketing, it's very, very difficult, um, which I knew nothing about. You go live, with your website and you think immediately you're going to get these these dollars and it doesn't happen unless you are proactive about online marketing which can be very costly but Dana was not defeated she had experience with corporate sales early on in her career so she decided to dig into her business toolbox and add to the roster of services she provided Setter marketing became vital when the economy took a downward spiral and we started looking at how we were operating and it just wasn't, the gift side was not where, where the money was at. So we had to change things. We began doing personalized items because companies always need to promote. Even, it will, especially in a challenged economy, promotion is key because they have to stay, they have to stay valid. Dana realized that she had to network aggressively to get her name out there and let people know about her business. The three things that I believe helped expand the business was one, forming a board. I believe that helped quite a bit. Friends, we, can, we came together once a month and they gave me great feedback on where they think the business should go and how it looked to them as an outsider. Um, I believe that joining the Southern California Minority Business Development Council was an amazing, amazing idea. And I know that that was what jump-started it. That's where I met Honda Motors. And that would be my third, Honda Motors. Uh, 
American Honda, I couldn't ask for a better mentor company. They have been instrumental in growing the business. I really don't believe I would have gotten where I've gotten as quickly had they not taken me under their wing. Charles Harmon has been instrumental along with Tony Piazza. They have really, really, they've taken me to events. They've introduced me to other corporate clients and, and they've been very helpful in catapulting the business to the next level. Another key to Cetera Marketing's growth was having well-known clients and using her experience with them to land other corporate customers. She was recognized by the Southern California Minority Business Development Council with a Supplier of the Year Award in 2011. Cetera Marketing is marketing based. So we'd like to find out what our client's end goal is with every promotion. So we would ask them who is their target market and what message they're trying to convey while, while promoting this project. And from there, we make suggestions. And those suggestions will protect the brand. That is, our, that is key when you're working with corporate clients, is protecting that brand. That's their number one asset. Dana is a dedicated business owner and has developed the habit of going the extra mile to meet her clients' needs, even on her most challenging days. Throwing in the towel with this business is never an option. It's not an option. I love this business. I believe when I wake up every day that I, am, I have a gift of being happy. This company gives me so much and I just want to give back to it. I love what I do and I, I wake up every day appreciative. So throwing in the towel would never be. On my worst day, I just remember my goal and my overall goal is to win. It was interesting to note that Dana had spent a lot of time and money developing a website as an online sales platform when she launched Giftsetera only to find that customers didn't show up. Even in this internet era, she learned that face-to-face -face sales and hand-to-hand -hand marketing can't be replaced by purely electronic means. In part two of today's Making It TV Presents, you'll see how the Challengers Boys and Girls Club in Central Los Angeles, California has developed an interesting partnership with American Honda. Welcome back to Making It TV Presents. Today, we're learning more about American Honda's collaborations with small business owners and community service groups. The nonprofit business sector surprises many outsiders when they learn that nonprofits must make a profit to survive and serve their constituents. Those organizations seek out individuals and corporate partners who demonstrate strong vision, such as American Honda. One of the most difficult things to do in any enterprise is to follow a superbly accomplished person into the job. The Challengers Boys and Girls Club was founded by the late Lou Dantzler in the summer of 1968. It really began when Lou discovered his 11-year-old neighbor trying to break into his house. Well, rather than turning the child over to the police, he decided to take him and several other boys to a neighborhood park for a day of fun. Decades before the internet, word spread quickly in inner city neighborhoods and soon the group needed a network of parent volunteers to work with the boys. The Boys and Girls Club has served many thousands of youngsters and been lauded by presidents. Sadly, in 2009, Lou Dantzler passed away and Corey had to step up into that spotlight that had shone so brightly on his father. Over time now, Corey has learned the club's mission very well. Hello, my name is Wade Williams and I've been coming to Challengers for nine years. What I like about Challengers Boys and Girls Club is there's a lot of great opportunities and different programs to do. The Challengers Boys and Girls Club is a cornerstone in the community. The Los Angeles location was started by the late Lou Dantzler in 1968 in the back of a pickup truck. They now serve 2,000 youngsters annually and occupy an entire city block. The mission of Challengers Boys and Girls Club is really to provide kids with, the, with positive alternatives to you know, negativity. And we do that through an array of programs that we have for our kids. <laughs> Athletics is something that's really a draw to get the kids here. Uh, our arts and craft department, our social recreational areas as well, our science lab, our learning center, our home economics, you know, our computer labs. We have a radio station and video production as well. Hey guys, this is Garnet. I'm on KGN at the Kids Good News Station. 
I think it's also very important to have teen programs, making sure that they have those activities and that they're led by positive adults. Challenges Boys and Girls Club is a year-round program. Corey Dantzler became CEO and president of the organization after serving as vice president. But his dad paved the way, starting as a grassroots organization, growing it into a success story. He was just a, a pioneer with uh, what he was doing with kids at that particular time. The Boys and Girls Club came to him and said, you know, you need to be a part of what we're doing. Over the years, the Dantzlers have fine-tuned their business acumen to continue growing as a thriving nonprofit organization. I think the uh, top three items you need to know about running a, a very successful nonprofit is consistency, vision, and perseverance. Consistency because you, you can't always just change different things, you know, just because maybe someone else doesn't like it. You have to do what, what works for the organization and stick with that. You have to have vision because, you know, without vision, where are you going to go? You know, you have to be able to articulate what that vision is, uh, either to the people that you serve, to your funders, and also to your parents. And perseverance, I mean, you know, nothing's going to be easy. you got to learn how to kind of knock down walls or go around them or get over them or get through them some kind of way because, you know, there always may be things out there that may stop you and uh, from maybe some of those things you want to do with vision, but you have to persevere through it. The 44-year-old organization still keeps up with the times. And with the help of funding from sponsors like American Honda Corporation, they're able to provide opportunities that not every kid on the block gets to experience. Their Honda Mini Bike Program is one that was introduced in the early days of the club and is now backed by popular demand. Now we're able to kind of bring the program back and also give it a new twist because, you know, the technology of, of the motorcycles have changed a lot and it's uh, really exciting to make sure that we see our girls involved with this program as well. So right now I'm going to T-clock the bike. T is for tires and wheels. You have to check the air pressure on the tires mm -hmm. and check the spokes. What are you checking for? To see if the spokes are loose and to see if the air pressure is okay in the tires. First I was scared and now I'm not scared anymore because my team members comforted me. It would not have happened with the help of, of Honda uh, and their involvement with the Boys and Girls Club and I think they saw the importance and the need to make sure that they were involved in the community, providing us with not just the motorcycles but also with funding as well to help support the program is something very important to us. One of Corey's most difficult challenges is continuous fundraising to ensure there's funding for all of the programs. I always joke that we bake our own stew when it comes to funding. We have a staff that are dedicated to you know, writing grants. We have a dedicated board who really works their tails off to, to fundraise. And we have individuals that uh, believe in our organization uh, who support us financially. Corey had started working with the organization at the young age of 14. But after he went off to college and returned home, he decided to bring his skills and expertise to challengers and work alongside his father and filling the shoes of Lou Dantzler is no easy task. I see that I have to just kind of work a little bit harder to kind of get my own, my own name. Before uh, I was Corey Dancer, president and CEO of Challengers Boys and Girls Club, I was Lou's son. The legend of my dad, Lou Dantzler, is something that I've had to contend with my, my entire tenure here working. You know, it comes with a lot of uh, responsibility and it also keeps me even killed and even grounded not to mess up. So, you know, so I, I, I uh, definitely always, you know, correct myself and, and make sure that I'm, I'm, you know, even killed and, and rooted and grounded. Corey is very proud to keep the Dantzler legacy alive at Challengers. Lou's original vision of providing lessons and strength courage and how to strive for something much more than a downtrodden life still guides the club. And coming up, we're going inside the American Honda campus in Torrance, California to meet Michael Acaviti, Vice President of Automobile Marketing for the American Honda Motor Company. We want to know about the many ways they're nurturing diverse marketing messages and community partnerships. Welcome back to Making It TV Presents. Today we're at the American Honda campus in Torrance, California to learn more about their advertising and marketing as well as looking at some shiny new cars. My co-host Lynette Romero is with Mike Acaviti, Vice President of Automobile Marketing for American Honda. 
So first of all, Mike, thank you so much for joining us. Um, you know, we all know that Honda has uh, quite a reputation for being very involved in the community. Tell us why that's so important. Well, it actually goes back to Honda's DNA and the type of leader that Mr. Honda was when he established this company. He really put a great value on a healthy community surrounding the business. And that way, the business has people to sell the product to. And we just feel it's very important for us to be well connected with the community. It really has to be second nature in so many ways. Yeah, we sell a lot of cars to a lot of diverse people. And so we want to make sure that we're speaking to those people in the language and the culture that they appreciate and connect with. And so this is why it's very important for us to have our multicultural strategy, which is actually a two-pronged strategy. Our first strategy is to speak to diverse customers through the general market, representing that this, we live in a diverse world now, right? It's, it used to be that uh, when we spoke to the general market, we only spoke to one part of the population. Well, not so much anymore. So we speak to the diverse communities through that general market, but then we also speak to them in language, in culture, through very targeted diverse advertising. Well, you talk about diversity with your customers, also your products. Um, tell us what's going on with you know energy and all the things that are happening with all that. Honda is really a leader in alternative energy cars. We have on the road today hydrogen car. We have electric car that we're just launching now, the Fit EV. We have natural gas car, the Honda Civic natural gas car. We have hybrid cars, and we're announced that we're going to launch a plug-in hybrid vehicle with our new Accord. So we're the car company that's actually putting these diverse energy efficient alternative fuels into the marketplace and we're going to see where the market goes and where the market goes Honda is going to be ready. The future is now, right? It's really <laughs> happening. All the things we always dreamed about, right. it's happening right now. Right. Now, it's not just about driving a car then, because the cars are different than they were. You know, it's not grandpa's car anymore. How do you make sure that, that, that your customers know what to do with these fantastic new vehicles they get? The technology in these cars is just outright amazing. You're right. I mean, 10 years ago, the, the quantum leap that we've had today, even from 10 years ago, I should say, is, uh, is phenomenal. And so what we need to do is make sure that our salespeople on understand the technology so that they can talk to the customers about it. And then our customers, we want to make sure that they understand, and the understanding process really starts at our website, where we have some pretty in-depth videos that we run to educate customers on the latest technologies and the benefits of the technology and how to use it. It's kind of like Honda 101, right? It really is. <laughs> so it's, it's modern day car number 101 for right, sure. Right, right. Okay, so obviously your business is building cars, um, selling cars, inventing all these great things, um, but there's got to be a lot of great opportunities out there for the community and also for small business. Absolutely. So the small businesses uh, that we use are through our tiered suppliers. So we may deal with one big supplier, as an example, that would supply us with parts or with our advertising. And they use small businesses to help deliver the product. And there's where the real opportunity becomes for a small business, is to work with those tiered suppliers to provide them with the area of expertise that the small business has. You know, many people might be intimidated and think, wow, Honda is just too big. Um, I'm too small to, to do anything with Honda, but that might not be true. That's not true at all. I mean, a good idea comes from everywhere, you know, anywhere, and that's one thing that we're always looking for. And so just because the size of the of the uh, company does not prohibit it from participating with us as a supplier, not at all. Okay, we talk about the future being now, but uh, there's a future tomorrow also. Um, what can you tell us? What's on the horizon? What things have we not even thought about that you guys are already working on? Well, you know, there's a real competitive advantage for us to hold those really close to our vest and not really divulge too much about our future product. I can say, though, that we are on the verge of launching the 2013 Honda Accord, which is going to really redefine the midsize segment. Hmm. It's a car that encompasses everything that a consumer could possibly need in the vehicle. Safety, fuel economy, luxury and craftsmanship, space, elegant styling, all wrapped up into one. And that's really, on the, in the imminent future, that's coming this fall. That makes me kind of want to know how you would, how do you roll something out like that? Because you want to make a big splash. Uh, what do you, how do you, do you do that online? How do you do that these days? Well, the answer to that question is really simple. It's everywhere that a consumer lives. And that is, yes, on television, we do mass marketing. And, and the television, it's meant to 
the advertising is meant to just make sure the word gets out that there's an all new product there. Mm -hmm. You can't really do a lot of discussing of the product in 30 seconds or 60 seconds. So the job is to get the word out there, get people interested so that they go online. So online, we do a lot of explaining and a lot of consumers are spending more time online. And so there's where we do most of the education on the benefits of the new product. But we all still rely on print. We still rely on radio. We rely on bus benches. Right. We rely on everywhere that a consumer can consume media is a place where we have to get our message out that there's this all new Accord and they want to they learn more about it. Well, I'll be checking out Twitter because I bet you'll be tweeting. <laughs> <laughs> we will, absolutely. Okay. And uh, you, know, you can follow me on Twitter if you like to and I'll follow you back. Perfect, okay, okay. thanks a lot, Mike. Okay. We appreciate all of your comments and uh, really getting an inside look at Honda. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, Nelson, back to you. Thank you, Lynette and Mike Acaviti. You know, there's another special Honda program I want you to know about. It was created over 23 years ago, and I'm proud to have been a part of that. Honda Campus All-Star Challenge is the first ever academic competition between students at America's historically black colleges and universities. The national finals took place in the American Honda Campus in Torrance, California, where there were 48 participating colleges and 130 matches. To get here, the students had to go through some intense preparations. We're really proud to be uh, the sponsor of this program for the past 23 years. Uh, we've touched over 75,000 students have passed through this program during that time. Uh, we've given $6 million of grants to the schools. It's just very meaningful to see the kids, not just the program and the uh, competition, but the experience that they all come through. Honda sees Campus All-Star Challenge as an important demonstration of their corporate engagement. You know, this is really about hard work. You know, this is really about dedicating oneself, you know, to a cause. Uh, and that requires, you know, a lot of focus and a lot of determination. Education is our number one for our corporate social responsibility. Uh, you know, the young students are going to be the futures of this country, the future leaders, uh, business people. And we really feel it's important to kind of really emphasize the educational opportunities for students. Well, it's important to the overall educational community because it allows the entire community of not only historically black colleges, but everyone to see the value that HBCUs bring, that we can educate our students. We've done that historically. We're doing that now. We have extremely bright students who are able to compete on any level. There's a great deal of pride among the student competitors as well as the educators. In total, I'm proudest of the fact that we do build entrepreneurs, that our students do go on to do unusual things, not just the normal things. Uh, we don't expect the normal anymore. Uh, we know that we have to produce the unusual, and our students grasp that idea very, very strongly. It was Morgan State's dedication and preparation that enabled them to become champions of the 2012 Honda Campus All-Star Challenge competition. This is means on my campus, um, um, the difference, uh, actually, especially today after we won, between some students staying on at Morgan and getting their degrees and some students having to drop out because they might not have that $500 or that $1,000 or that $1,500 to enable them to continue toward their baccalaureate degree. Uh, and so, you know, we take away from this, of course, all the accolades of having um, been the national champions, but we also take away $50,000. And that $50,000 is going to come to Morgan and will be used for scholarships, you know, to enable these young people to persist to get their college degrees. We're excited about what Honda has done. We know these are difficult times, but to make a contribution to prepare future generations of students, nothing is more invaluable. I love the stories of how businesses begin and hopefully grow to reach the sky. Honda itself was a small business, and American Honda began in a Los Angeles storefront with just six people. Today, they directly employ around 25,000 people and account for billions of dollars in annual salary and wages. You and your business have the potential to make it, perhaps even make it that big. Thank you so much for joining us for another Making It TV Presents episode. Today, we were focused on Honda. We want you to succeed in business and in life. So on behalf of my co-host, Lynette Romero, I'm Nelson Davis. Thank you for joining us.